Hello, I'm Ken Robinson, and it was my great pleasure recently to meet Sylvia Foho at the BET conference in London, where I was the keynote speaker. By the way, let me apologise immediately if I mispronounce uh, the names of the people I want to acknowledge, including Sylvia. I'm uh, not terribly good at Spanish, although my English is not bad, really, uh, for a native speaker, I imagine. Um, I was at BET to talk about my new book, the uh, work that was the result of a, a long period of engagement in education. It's called Creative Schools, Transforming Education from the Ground Up. You know, a lot of people uh, know my work from the talks I've given at TED over the years, but I've been involved in education for very much longer than uh, the period since my TED Talks uh, first came out. I've worked with school districts, I've worked with governments, I've worked with institutions of all sorts on education transformation over a very long period. And it's been my pleasure to get to know some wonderful schools. And Sylvia was telling me about the work at the Uruguayan American School, so I want to say, say a special hello to Matthew Beata, I hope I pronounced that properly, uh, the director, and also to Vicky Placeres, uh, and of course to all the staff at uh, UAS and to all the students too, and the parents who support the work that you do. I just want to say a few quick words about the work I've been doing and how I think it may connect to what you're doing at UAS and, and in Ur Uruguay more generally. Uh, a lot of what I've been doing over a very long period is based on three main ideas. The first of them is that we are living in revolutionary times. Now I know the word revolution is sometimes a bit overused but I think it's justified just now given the rate of technological change that's sweeping the world and, and transforming it at the same time and also given the enormous growth in populations. We are the largest community of human beings ever to exist on the planet at the same time in the history of our species. We're now getting on for seven and a half billion people. If you combine all of that with the strains on the environment, the impact on our various cultures, the ways in which the economies around us are changing, the political complexities that we all face these days, and the uh, very challenging social issues that all countries have to contend with, education is absolutely in the front line. So that's the first proposition, that we are living in revolutionary times, and that's a big theme in creative schools. The second is, if we're to meet this revolution, we have to think differently about ourselves and our talents. Many of the challenges that we face as humanity are created by us as a species. They're not external threats, they're ones that we've generated through our own activities. Uh, and a big part of this for me is to recognise that what sets us apart from the rest of life on Earth is also in some ways what threatens our continuing uh, survival as a species. I don't think that's too, uh, too big a call. We have deep powers of imagination, tremendous powers of creativity. And with these powers, we've transformed life on Earth for ourselves and for all other forms of life on Earth in a very short amount of time. And I believe we have to dig more deeply into these resources now if we're not only to flourish, but to solve the many problems that we've also generated. And the third, is, the third proposition is that therefore we have to do things differently. And we also especially have to do things differently in education. See, a lot of our education systems were developed in the 19th century to meet the needs of a previous time. Uh, given the changes that are now sweeping the world, we need to think very differently about our students, about our teachers, and about education itself and its broader purposes. You see, I think there are four big purposes to education. Uh, the first of them, and these aren't in order uh, of preference, they're just a, a convenient way of ordering them so I can comment on them, but they're all connected. The first of them is economic. You know, we live in times where economies are shifting very rapidly. The world is increasingly globalised. We have uh, a world being transformed by the impact of digital technology. Jobs are changing. Whole industries have fallen away. New industries are rising. The balance of world trade is shifting. The skills that are needed in business and in industry these days are different in many ways to the ones that were necessary when I was a student and when I was uh, growing up in England in the 1950s and 1960s. So there are major economic challenges and a big question to ask ourselves therefore is what sort of skills do our students need 
if they're to make their way economically and if they're to contribute to the economic well-being of their cities and their communities and to our well-being globally. So this big economic agenda here, which calls, I think, for a different way of uh, considering the curriculum uh, and away from this old division between academic and vocational courses. I know a lot of parents believe that academic courses are more prestigious. That's true, I know, in Uruguay, but it's true in pretty much every country in the world. It was true when I was growing up. Uh, there is this belief that academic programs are in themselves more challenging, more taxing, and more important. Well, I think we need to challenge that idea because... Uh, many of the skills that we need now to survive, to prosper as communities and globally are not taught in a conventional academic curriculum and we depend on many more practical and social and uh, cultural skills than those that are purely taught through an academic uh, way of thinking about the curriculum. A second big purpose of education is social. We live in very complicated times and part of the role of education is to help our students understand the world around them, how it works, how they can function within it, and how they contribute positively, positively to it. These things aren't done just by running occasional classes on civics. They're to do with the culture of the school itself and how we engage students in the day-to-day -day running of the school and how we engage them in the broader community as they're growing up and being educated. There's a third big role of education, which is cultural, by which I mean... Education should help us, as I know you aim to do in, in the European American School, to understand our own culture, how our values are formed, how our traditions have shaped the way we think and act now. But not only our own cultures, but the cultures of other people with whom we coexist. The cultural roles of education are profound and challenging and essential. Uh, but there's a fourth role too, which underpins all of these, which is personal. In the end, education is about human beings, about people. It's about helping people to discover their talents, their abilities, and to make the best of themselves and of the lives they have now and the lives that lie before them. You know, the world is full of wonderful examples of people who've achieved extraordinary things. Uh, I don't mean they've become famous or celebrities or, or tremendously wealthy, but they've changed not only their own lives, but the lives of other people around them once they discover their real talents and their real abilities. These are things I talked about at some length in a book I published a few years ago, which I know is available in Uruguay, by the way, it's, it's called The Element, How Finding Your Passion Changes Everything. So these four roles, the economic, the social, the cultural, and the personal, are really fundamental to the challenges that we all have to face with now in education, and education is the way to address these challenges. Well, I know that at UAS, these are very much on your mind, you have a big emphasis there on community, you have a big emphasis on technological uh, innovation and using that in schools but also uh, as a way of getting children to connect more with the world around them and, and to look at some of the deep economic challenge that we face. There's a big emphasis I know on cultural education and developing global citizens. I think these are really important values at the school and I think they're important too for, if I can say so, for Uruguay as a whole. You know, most countries these days are very wrapped up in the league tables that are published by PISA through the OECD, and uh, I know that uh, Uruguay features, you know, somewhere around the middle, a bit lower sometimes on these piece of league tables, and it's important information and it's helpful to have it. And nothing I'm saying is arguing against the importance of having the highest possible standards in languages, in mathematics and sciences, but, you know, we need a broad curriculum which also emphasises the arts, which emphasise the humanities and physical education, and which sees the important dynamics between all of these in, in creating a powerful culture in our individual schools. Uruguay has invested heavily in education over the years and I know it's seen as a very important strategic issue and, and it is. I think it's important moving forward, again if I can say so, that the, the initiatives cover a broad range of objectives of the sort that I've described and that we see that the, the future of education, the future of our countries and our communities, uh, rests upon a much more expansive agenda for education than those specific targets that are expressed in the PISA league tables. Now, the way to raise standards overall is to raise children's uh, expectations of themselves and their engagement in education and in their communities. And if we get those things right, you know, standards will take care of themselves. We have to get the culture right in schools for things to grow and to flourish properly. So, um, I wanted to, again, uh, give my thanks to Sylvia uh, for making contact, 
contact with me at the BEP conference. I want to thank all of those of you at the school, uh, particularly the director and the principals, uh, and all the staff who are uh, doing so much for so many young people. And my very best wishes to the future of the school, and also, of course, to the great tasks that lie ahead for education in Uruguay more generally. These are historic challenges, and I think we have an historic mission to reach them. Thank you very much.